he's a veteran that um, you know he always wants to be out there uh, it killed him watching from the sideline every time we came off you know and didn't score uh, he'd always come come to me ask me what I'm seeing uh, so that he could relay it to the guys or you know he would relay something from the O-line to, to me and kind of ask me like hey like if you could just you know stay in this spot more than this spot just because you know this guy's going to le- need a little more help so he he's kind of the the visionary for for the guys up front um and i mean he he's the he's the captain you know for for those guys up there and um you know we all respect them so just seeing how much uh you know this this means to him football and uh you know what what he's doing uh to try to get back out there to play with us you know it's Pretty remarkable. That was Tua Tungabailoa referring to Teron Armstead and what he's going through to try and get back on the field. I wanted to do this video. I wanted to talk to you, Miami Dolphins true fans out there and speak to you in regards to what Teron Armstead means to this team. And people sometimes, well, of course, he's an offensive tackle. We need we need things to be shored up on the offensive line. The offensive line looked horrible against the San Francisco 49ers, which they didn't, but I, I, I digress. And a lot of people don't know. It, it's, it seems like a lot of people don't understand just the importance of Teron Armstead to this team. And it drives me nuts because these press conferences get posted online as soon as they happen they're broadcast live people can listen to them of course not everybody has the time to listen to these you know these these 12 15 20 minute press conferences people are working and then they don't catch up and then they, they look at the news and they may check twitter and they may see some things but they don't dig in and so i i find some nuggets in these things that most people just overlook they're so worried about stats and numbers and everything else and they don't listen listen closely to what the guy is saying so i just played that it's a it's only a 55 second uh recording of what tua was talking about teron armstead but i'm gonna play what amounts to about a 30 second interlude part of this clip that i, I really really think you need to focus in on and it'll help you understand from the perspective of a quarterback what Teron Armstead really means to this team. It's far beyond just protection. As a former offensive lineman, when I heard this, I went, oh shit. He just he just told you what happened against the 49ers. He just told you what was going on, and most people probably missed it. I'm gonna play this again, and I want you to listen very closely to what he says right here. And tell me if you pick up on what he says about Teron Armstead and, and his value to this team. Listen to this very closely. Uh, so that he could relay it to the guys or, you know, he would relay something from the O-line to, to me and kind of ask me like, hey, like if you could just, you know, stay in this spot more than this spot, just cause you know, this guy's gonna le- need a little more help. Did you hear that? So when Teron Armstead is on the field, when he's playing, the offensive line looks to him for calls. They look to him to, for direction as to what's going on. In this game, when him not being on the field, that communication was broken. You, you couldn't do real-time updates. So when he said, there's a guy who may need some help, he may be talking about the center. He may be talking about the guard. And they're saying, Tua, can you move a little bit to the right? Can you take a step deeper? Can you move a little bit to the left? It'll help us get the blocking scheme down. As a former offensive lineman, I I, I saw that and my, my, my jaw dropped and I started just salivating because I know exactly what they're talking about and nobody's talking about it. That kind of coaching on the field, in the huddle, during the play, the five guys up front, the center, the two guards, the two tackles are saying, Hey, this is what's happening. Hey guys, this is what's happening out there. We need to move to a little bit to the right. If we move him a little bit to the right, we're gonna get this thing blocked, but he's not out here. So we've got guys out here who can't make those calls and two is running around back there and he's not understanding, move over. We got you. 
if you just move a little bit to the left, if you move a little bit to the right, if you step up here, someone is telling him that versus going through a play, having Bosa bust through the line or whoever, and then going off to the sideline after the play, after the action is over and saying, hey, so what'd you see out there? By, by then, the play has already been disrupted. So it took until halftime, where I'm sure at this point after seeing this, that uh, what he did was go into a meeting with the offensive line coach, um, Applebaum. He, he got Teron in there. He got the five, six guys from the offensive line that were cycling through. And they said, this is the problem that we're having. This is how that's going to be solved. Whereas if Teron was playing, if he was actually in a game, it happens in real time. Hey, listen, and I'm not gonna, I'm not saying any name to say that this guy was messing up, but imagine if he said, hey, listen, Connor Williams is having a problem with an inside blitz or a stunt. So we need you to do this or do that. That's the kind of conversation that takes place in a huddle. Most people don't know, they've never been in a huddle. They think the quarterback just goes in and says, all right, I'm gonna throw it to Tyreek. And when Tyreek's open, I'm gonna let it go. No, 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 no. The formation is called, two is listening in his helmet for the call to be made. While he's doing this, those guys up front are communicating. Oftentimes you'll see guys in stances and they're pointing, they're doing this kind of stuff and they're communicating. Well, the quarterback also sees him go, 92 is the mic. He's pointing out different coverages, what he sees as well, because he's the one standing up. He can look and see what somebody's coming. I'm down in a stance, I can't see. And so at that point, after a couple of plays, you have to adjust on the fly. And, and, and now that I've said that, now that I've said that, just listen to this. It's only like five seconds I'm gonna play. And then tell me if you now understand what was going on without Teron Armstead? Or, you know, he would relay something from the O line to to me and kind of ask me like, "Hey, like, if you could just, you know, stay in this spot more than this spot, just because you know this guy's gonna need a little more help." So he he's kind of the the visionary for for the guys up front. Um, and I mean, he he's the he's the captain, you know, for for those guys. He's the visionary for the guys up front. He, two is at a press conference, probably with a bunch of English majors who have no idea about football, and that went right over their heads. They had no clue. He, he talked at such a deep level of football right there that it just went and, and nobody understood what he said. He's the vision on the field. He's essentially another coach. He's been in the leagues for 10, 11 years. He knows what everything is happening. That's why he doesn't have to practice every single day. He's a student of the game. He understands what's going on. He probably has watched film of Bosa. Rewind, play, rewind, play, rewind, play. He knew his first step. He understood his first move. Is he gonna swim? Is he gonna throw an arm bar? What's he gonna do? And, and he would go into it if he was playing, he would know what to do. At, at that point, during, in the huddle, during the break, guys, Move to the right, slide right. Here's what's happening to it. You need to step up too. You need to step back. Just something simple like that. A simple statement that none of us ever hear. We're not in the huddle with the Miami Dolphins. We don't, we're not in the game rooms. We're not, we're not watching film sitting next to Tua. We're not sitting there next to Teron and hearing what he's saying. And Tua just revealed in, in literally a 15 second <laughs> speech about or, or question, he just told you what happened. And there's a ton of fanboys out there who are like, oh yeah, Toronto, you know, blah, 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 blah. And they just talk about stats and everything. And they don't understand the game. They're not students of the game. He just told you. I hope you guys understand. Is anybody catching on to this Barry guy? 